Hi, in this video, we're going to discuss standard macros and standard macro creation inside of the Altrix platform. Macros are modules that have the flexibility to be run as a single tool within another module. It's the easiest way to extend the Altrix platform to deliver and manage repeatable processes within an organization. In this session, you're going to learn how to construct a macro to perform that repeatable process via one tool. In order to demonstrate the creation of a macro, I'm going to enter into the Altrix Designer Desktop Engine. The first thing that we're going to do when designing a macro is we'll actually look at the properties of the configuration of the module and we'll dynamically transform the type from a standard module into a macro. The initial macro that we're going to develop will be a standard macro that's going to have both an input and an output, meaning that the tool that we're going to design can consume data, it will process data in the middle, and then it will output the results. In order to start that basic design, what we're going to do is enter into our interface design tools. Inside of here, there's actually two tools that will help us with the macro creation process. One's a macro input tool to help automate and construct the input connector that's going to go directly into the tool. The other is the macro output, which is actually going to help us design and, and construct that output connector. Okay. In this case here, what I'm going to do is start by clicking and dragging a macro input tool directly onto the working canvas. The configuration window for this is fairly simplistic. I can either enter in my own text-based information to use as a standard template to define and build out the visual workflow process, or I can leverage a source that is going to act as an input file. In this case here, I'm just going to simply use a text input. We're going to edit some data. We're going to call this a number, and we're just going to enter into uh, the, the text editor a series of numbers. So 213, 34, 567, 89, you know, 345. Okay, so those are five numbers. What we're also going to be able to do is give this input a name. So we'll call it just a, you know, standard input. And we can also give the connector abbreviation. The connector abbreviation is what, is what will show up in the tool as the designation for this uh, particular tool. So we can designate it with an I. And then we can also show a field mapping or not. Now, a field mapping will basically mean that this initial column of data is going to be need to be present in the source of information that we're going to be working with as it flows through the application. Okay. So basically, the macro will have us map to that particular numeric value or isolate from our data source flowing into the tool. What data is that numeric or number value? So we'll, contain, we'll, we'll continue to show this directly inside of the tool configuration. Now in this case, what we're going to do to those numbers as they flow in is going to be fairly simplistic. We're going to toggle over to our data preparation tool set and we'll click and drag onto the canvas a formula tool. What we're going to do is stream that input directly into the formula tool and construct a simple output field. We're going to call it result. The result's going to be formatted to be a number because what we're going to do is take the existing field, which is a number coming in, and we're going to multiply it by a new number. Okay? The placeholder that we're going to have inside of here will be just number 999. Okay? The result of this, okay is just going to be something fairly simplistic. I'll click and drag a browse tool onto the canvas. We'll run the process. We're going to see the number field as well as the result field. In this case here, though, what we're going to do instead of looking at the browse tool, we're going to go back to our interfacing tools and we'll click and drag onto the canvas that macro output. Again, creating the placeholder okay, for the results to be streamed out, much like you see information being streamed out of the formula tool. Okay? In this case here, we can give the output a name. We'll just call it output, and we'll give it a connector abbreviation of an O. At this point, what we do need to do, though, is design the tool so that the user can define what that multiplier is. Okay? What they're going to be able to do is choose from a series of interfacing tools to establish a series of parameters or questions that can be asked through the tool configuration. These questions can be date list select boxes, they can be drop down list select boxes, uh, they could be numeric up and downs, and you can embed radio buttons and whatnot. In this case here, we can have a numeric up and down, or better yet, we can leverage a text box for the end user to enter into their, enter in their own numeric value. So we can say something like, uh, for the text to be displayed, please enter a number. 
we can add default text if we want. In this case, we can make it uh, you know, blank uh, so that the user just has to enter everything in. Uh, and then we can ask, you know, set a series of configurations. So, you know, this could be a multi, we can mask the text for passwords so that it shows up as uh, asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. We can have multi lines of text and whatnot. What we can do is then connect this question directly to the lightning bolt here on my formula tool, which will actually place an action tool directly into onto the canvas that sits in between my control or my parameter here and the tool that we're gonna be updating. So essentially what this is saying to us is that we need to assign an action to dynamically update what we see in the formula, okay? We're gonna update and change the value, in this case, of the number 999 with whatever an end user enters through that parameter. Once we've done that, we can save this as an output, okay? Where we can call this, you know, build a new a directory here called macros here, so. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll create a new folder called macros. We'll enter inside of this macros directory and we'll call this standard. Okay. Now that this is a macro, what we can do is open up a brand new module and see if that macro actually works. Okay? So what I can do is go ahead and click and drag an input tool directly onto the working canvas. I can go and navigate out to my file system to find some data that we can begin to work with. What I'll consume into the application, in this case here, is a series of transactions coming from an XML document. It has a series of numeric values inside of here that we can begin to work with. Since this is uh, a, an XML document, though, we are gonna have to do some quick data prep here. So I'll enter into my data preparation tool set and we'll click and drag a select tool onto the canvas. The reason why is because XML will format every single field of data as a character string of varying length since XML is text. In this case here, what we'll do is we'll take that sales volume, we'll dynamically change it to a double, and we'll also take that shipping cost and we'll change that to a double as well. This way we have two numeric values that we can work with. It's at this point, what I'm gonna do is place that newly created or constructed macro directly onto the working canvas. In order to do that, all I have to do is simply right click on the working canvas itself, go to insert, and we can add a macro directly onto that canvas. Here's the directory where I can point to that standard macro. You'll see the design, you know, adheres to what we were asking. The input configuration has the letter I attached to it, and the output has the letter O. It's going to ask me to choose, since I asked to, upon input, to create a field mapping, it's going to ask me to identify which record or field, actually I should say, is going to be the numeric value that we're going to multiply or use as our multiplier uh, inside of the macro itself. So we can take sales and then we can multiply all those sales statistics by the number five. Okay. It's at this point here, the result we can browse to and we can process the information. So again, this macro has the look and feel of any other tool that we're gonna configure on the tool palette. You'll see that 9,000 records were consumed in, 9,000 records are our output. If I scroll all the way over to the end here, I'm going to see my number and how that's been multiplied by 5. So 5.9 times 5 is 29.5, fairly simplistic. So we're validating that the macro is actually running the underlying logic quickly and easily. This is just a quick example of how to build a standard macro.